Let's begin with the question. If there is an attacker who is maliciously trying to get through our firewall or compromise our systems, yes or no, do we want to know about it? And I'm hoping the answer is yes. Now, unfortunately, many of the times, do we know about it? The answer is no, until there's a compromise or a breach. Now, to help us identify and also protect against attacks in our network, we can use a set of technologies known as IDS, Intrusion Detection Systems, and IPS, which is Intrusion Prevention Systems. And in this video, you and I get to chat about what those are and how they can work. So let's start off with the acronym IDS, Intrusion Detection System. And the key element here with an IDS is this part right here, detection. The IDS, when implemented as an IDS, can shout and yell and send alerts and let us know that there's an attack that's happening, but it doesn't either do or have the ability to prevent the attack from continuing. And there's many different ways of implementing an intrusion detection system. One is we could take our existing devices, like a firewall that supports IDS, and we just train it to pay attention. <laughs> if the software and the firmware and the hardware all supports it and it supports IDS, we could train it to send off alerts when it sees malicious activity. And then those alerts could be responded to and worked with by the administrators and by the security team. Or another option, if we don't want to have it in line with the traffic doing the IDS functionality, we could have another device. It could be a virtual device or a physical device that supports looking for and identifying malicious traffic or attacks that are attempted against our systems. And what we could do is we could take the traffic on the network and copy it over to this device. So maybe we're copying all the traffic for the VLAN or all the traffic that's coming in or out of the router interface. And we copy it down here to the IDS device. It analyzes the traffic and then it sends off alarms indicating that it found something. So the key here with IDS, whether it's inline like this firewall is supporting IDS, or it's a device that's just getting copies of the traffic, if it's configured as IDS, intrusion detection only, it can set off alarms when it sees malicious activity. However, it's not going to prevent the attack from continuing. And one common thought that many people have is, well, <laughs> if it can see the attack, why doesn't it stop it? And if we configure a device so it can stop the attack, that would then be implemented as an IPS, intrusion prevention system. So if we were going to implement a system as an intrusion prevention system, it has to have the ability to not only see the attack that's happening, but also to go ahead and prevent it from getting any further in the network. So if we're doing IPS, we couldn't have just a copy of the data being sent to that device because if we did <laughs> and it sees an attack, it's not in line with it. It can't stop. So IPS pretty much means it's in line with the traffic that it's analyzing. So if it sees an attack, it can stop an attack. So if we implement it here on the firewall with the IPS services, let's imagine we have a hacker out here on the internet who's trying to compromise us. And maybe that attacker is trying to reach these servers and we have IPS enabled. So it's looking at the traffic and it sees, whoa, that's malicious. The firewall can then go ahead and stop the attack right there and not let it get through to the servers, hence doing intrusion prevention. And based on the vendor of the IDS or IPS system, they use a variety of methods for looking at and identifying, hopefully correctly, identifying malicious traffic or attack traffic. And sometimes it gets it right and sometimes it gets it wrong. <laughs> and when an IDS or IPS gets it right, it's called a true positive, which means it saw something malicious, it called it out as malicious and it got it right. Also, if it sees traffic that is not malicious, like just innocent traffic, no harm done, and it doesn't send off an alarm, that would be an example of a true negative. And in a perfect world, which we don't yet live in, um, all we want is true positives and true negatives to have the IDS or IPS device correctly identify malicious traffic and not accidentally label innocent traffic as malicious. So if we have a situation where it's not going quite as planned and it identifies innocent traffic as malicious, that would be called a false positive. And if there's a situation where we are being attacked and yet the IDS or IPS didn't recognize it as malicious, that would also be bad. That would be a false reading and that would be a false negative. And those are tougher because if your IDS or IPS isn't sending off alarms, uh, you'd have to have some other indication that there's a compromise or that the attack is happening. And so with any IDS IPS system, there is going to be some tuning and tweaking with the goal of getting in the true category accurate identification of malicious traffic and not sending up the alarm when innocent traffic is going through the network.
And if the question comes up in your mind, well, does the Palo Alto Firewall support IDS and IPS services? The answer is a resounding absolutely yes. And it does a fantastic job at that. All right, so for the next video, what I'd like to do is talk about a situation where we've got a user, for example, here that needs to securely access corporate resources. Or maybe we have the headquarters site here and we have a remote site here and we want to have a secure communication path between them and leverage the internet. To pull that off, we're going to use some flavor of virtual private network, which is the topic for our next video. So I'll see you there, my friend, in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.